All right, good afternoon, good morning all. Really appreciate everyone joining us today for this webinar. Hopefully we all learn something new. Today we're going to cover off plant platforms, unpack HVAC and mechanical plant platforms. So, so today's webinar is going to be around 30 minutes long. Um, we're going to cover off obviously platform types and uh, the applications, several applications today different requirements, different design requirements, and we'll finish off at the end with a good Q&A session. So if you've got some questions, they pop into your head throughout, please just fire them through on the Q&A panel at the top of your screen or the bottom, wherever that will be on your screen. And um, yeah, look forward to seeing those uh, come in. So should I introduce myself? My name's Heinz and I work in the specification side of the business. Um, so working alongside the likes of the architects, engineers and so on. Toby, you can introduce yourself. Thanks Hans. Yeah, so Toby Broomhall. My main role at Monkey Toe is uh, working with construction companies, developers, builders, air conditioning contractors. So yeah, out on the field talking to clients. Dallas. Good morning everyone, afternoon. Um, so I have got a similar role to Heinz. Um, my name is Dallas and I'm based in Queensland in Australia. Um, so whereas Heinz looks after New Zealand, I've got a similar role for some of the states in Australia. Um, so, yep, that's about that. Excellent. So I guess our platform focus today is really on those commercial high-rise retail centre, um, industrial plan, industrial building. So that's kind of where we're focusing our talk today the platform requirements for those type of industries and areas. Why is an HVAC platform required? Pretty basic question, I know. Um, so you can see there a plant platform, which is um, on a Coles building. So the key reasons for a plant platform is obviously to support mechanical equipment, air conditioning units, uh, refrigeration equipment. Um, it's obviously to restrain that equipment, tie it down, bolt it down, fix it down, and obviously to allow the servicing of that equipment, gaining access to it in a safe way. So where is an external HVAC plant platform required? Once again, a bit of an obvious question. Um, key things there, we've got noted down limits, the use of tenable space. Uh, it's a more cost-effective option than an internal plant room um, and obviously future-proofing the requirements for supporting equipment in the future. So a couple of things there, um, obviously a plant platform on the roof of a building or outside the main structure of the building, um, it, it costs a fraction of what it costs to have an internal plant platform um, where your standards Square metre rate of the platform is obviously a lot higher when it's internal. Dallas. Uh, yep, so um, obviously Monkey Joe is part of what we do in that complete package um, is the compliance documentation and the sign offs and certifications that you need um, for the platform that we're putting on your roof. Um, so whether that be producer statements for New Zealand or Form 15s, Form 16s for Queensland. Um, other documentation and sign-offs for other states, um, we look after the whole lot. We take into the fact um, seismic loadings, wind loads, obviously seismic's a huge thing for us in New Zealand, and wind loads is very significant for us in Northern Queensland. Um, so those two things are both taken into, into account when we're doing our initial physical engineering and testing, um, but that obviously filters through to the certification and documentation that we provide you, along with our full shop drawing package. Um, what, on, on uh, initiation of the job for, for approval and obviously signing off the job at the end of the installation. That's good, Dallas. That's obviously a really important part of plant platforms is um, compliance of them, um, taking into account all the engineering forces involved. So I guess what we're saying here is really, yeah, yeah, we're seeking to remove the complexity and the, some of that frustration with coordinating a plant platform. You know, there's many 
many different engineers and architects involved in that coordination phase and it um, can be complex. So, so we seek to remove that complexity. So just a couple of steps here. So obviously step one is the obviously initial consultation. So we'll come to site, come to your office, chat to you about the requirements. We can then put together some concepts, concept designs and obviously costings. So you've got that upfront cost. Then we can move through to finalising the design and finalising your needs. And then obviously at that stage, we can put together some lead time requirements and, um, and, and work through there. So the turnkey package, I guess what we're saying there is we keep the whole thing in house. So, you know, it's the likes of myself and Dallas working with you through that, ensuring things are compliant and ensuring um, we've got your design needs covered design and engineering, as Dallas has already said, um, look, look after the full shop drawings and um, engineering statements required there. Manufacturing happens. Um, we have our own manufacturing facilities in Australia and New Zealand, and obviously look after the installation or their own installation teams um, dotted throughout both Australia and New Zealand again. That's good. So really end-to-end -end solution, um, and obviously, it very important protecting your asset with a, with a system that's um, being designed properly and right through to the final install. Really important to monkey toe and obviously all building owners. Just wanted to chip in there too. Um, I see there's a bunch more uh, attendees just recently joined, so thanks very much. I just mentioned at the start, please fire in your questions as we go if they pop into your head and um, we'll have a Q&A session at the end to answer them. Look forward to them. Good. Dallas, over to you. Yep, okay. So I guess what we're doing here is setting out some of the comparisons um, and the advantages of going the monkey toe way. Um, so just a bit around the detail of the platforms that we can provide. Um, so obviously what we do, everything is done in aluminium. Um, so whether that be a Perlin mounted system or a portal mounted system, um, both of them are done in aluminium through monkey toe. And um, well, I guess we're challenging the tradition of doing that in structural steel. So where the structural steel is heavy and cumbersome um, and expensive, um, we cha we're challenging that with our lightweight modular systems. Um, so just that you can see there fairly clearly there's huge savings in weight, um, which is an obvious one with using the marine grade aluminium that we use. And then there's the screening and the handrails and the acoustics. We can do that complete package. So rather than getting someone else to come in and do the acoustics and someone else to do the screening, um, we're doing that whole package um, from, from concept through to installation. And um, obviously the product in the nature of its modulability, we can build it very quickly on site. Um, so you're reducing the amount of man hours working at height, working at risk. I think that's, that's good, Dallas. That. So a couple of, I guess you, the, the platform's got to be fixed to the roof in one way or another. So there's two clear ways there. One's a purlin mounted option. And this here is just showing how, that, how those loads are transferred back through to the purlin. So whether it's those wind loads from the screens, um, from the actual plant equipment loaded on the platform, transferring that all the way back through to the purlins. This one's showing obviously the portal mounted option. So um, with, it, with it loaded up with the stubs back to the portals, so the load's going back through the main um, building structure, the portals. So you've got, got the portal mounted platform with an X-beam. So just to highlight the name X-beam, it's, it's re referring to our recently developed carbon fiber aluminum mixture beam. So it's a structural beam, obviously designed especially for supporting large loads spanning from portal to portal. Dallas, did you want to cover off that system in a bit more detail? Yeah, that's good, Toby. Um, basically what we're providing here is a direct alternative to the structural steel. So we're providing a lightweight product that can span the same distances. It's built the same way, um, but it's a lightweight system being aluminium and carbon fibre. So... You can see there, we've got a bit of a focus here on a project we've recently completed in South Australia for Coles Mount Gambia. Um, this original building was, um, we got the order for a Perlin mounted platform on this one. 
and um, in getting into the detail with the engineer and working where the loads were going on the building, um, it turned out that we couldn't load up the purlins. Um, the building wouldn't work um, with that sort of load on the purlins. So it did a full circle and came back around to a, a portal mounted system. Um, so our X-Beam was an ideal solution for that job. Um, if you just want to flick to the next slide there, Heinz, there's a couple of images there of the product being built. Um, once again, being lightweight, we have the advantage of being able to build it on the ground and lift it to the roof in large sections or in one piece in some cases. Um, so this particular site um, at the far, site, far end of the building was where the platform needed to go and there was a road right up against the edge of the building. Um, it would have meant closing down the road um, and traffic control to lift the platform onto the roof. Um, but we were able to, with x -Beam, build it in the front car park, crane it right across the roof and drop it into place on, on top of the stubs. Um, so one, one, we, um, the installation team went to site a week early, put the stubs in place, someone did the flashings and the, sealed it all off and then built the platform on the ground the following week, craned it onto the stubs um, the next week. So it was all done and dusted very quickly and very little time on the roof. That's awesome, Dallas. And it, as the um, people on the call would um, realise that a plant platform of that size and nature uh, manufactured out of structural steel the traditional way would weigh between 5 and 12 tonnes, um, which would be virtually impossible to do in that way. But X-Beam obviously provided that solution. Yeah, that's good. And that little image there just showing the, re the render of the of the shop drawings. Um, so we're providing a full detail from start to finish for this job. Um, that being certification, shop drawings, the product, the supply, the install, freight to site, the whole lot. We're, look, we're covering the whole package. Um, in this job, it included the stubs coming up from the structural steel. So we looked after everything from the structural steel connection right up through the roof and the platform itself and the screening. So we'll do the complete package and we work with the structural engineers and the acoustic engineers, whoever we need to work with to ensure that what's there in the way of building structure is adequate to support the load we're putting on it. Yeah, absolutely. So on to Perlin mounted platforms. Um, again, same idea, they're a modular system and it, that obviously means really versatile, really flexible as to what you can and can't do. Designed to suit your load, so whether that's you know what what we call a standard um, rating of 2.5 kPa, right up to your you know 5 kPa, your, some of your larger chiller units and so on. So designed to the requirements. That that example there shown there is at another Coles project, Coles Flagstone, um, which was a Perlin mounted platform design. Toby, do you want to talk about this casual square one in Parachute? Thanks, Hans. It's quite a cool project. Um, I'm quite passionate about. You can see the sun shining on it there, which is always a good sign. So where the sun's shining, um, along the front face there, you can see a perforated monkey toe plant screen, um, which is purlin mounted. And obviously, if you flip to the next slide, Hines, there's a better drone shot over the roof. So. The platform combined on stage one supported over 10 tonne of mechanical equipment. At the back there you can see your larger air handling units, some of your smaller split units throughout the middle, um, and then obviously some more air handling units along the front. So refrigeration equipment, air conditioning equipment, um, spread over a large area of the roof, supported by purlins, um, and obviously includes the um, necessary handrails and aesthetic plant platform perforated screen. Good. Which brings us obviously to plant screening. So the idea of a screen on your platform is obviously to improve the aesthetics, you know, to improve the look of the roof. Hide the plant equipment um, that you don't want to see from the street or from the car park. So a couple of options really. Aluminium louvers, a couple of examples there. These can be either integrated directly with the plant platform, so fixed to the platform and designed as a part of the platform structure, or as a completely separate standalone screen. Um, so these can be obviously powder coated, so they can be powder coated to any standard color option and um, variable louvers. 
spacing. So you can uh, vary the louver spacing and vary the louver angle depending on um, the viewing angle, whether that's from the road or from surrounding buildings. That's good. That's awesome. A couple other points here. Obviously, the top photo on the right, you can see the main ducting heading in through the cutout. So that's obviously all part of the design. Um, you can see some handrails over the back um, and the picture down the bottom, the front. There's some gates being added to the platform to allow access by an EWP. Um, also a ladder bracket attached to the platform for a contractor to gain access for a ladder. For service requirements, obviously. Yep, thanks, Hans. Hush Monkey, Dallas, you, you, you can talk about this one? Yep, I'll try and cover it off. Um, so Hush Monkey is our solution for acoustic screenings, which not only blocks and hides the unsightly plant on the roof, but it's also giving you some acoustic attenuation properties as well. Um, it's basically using the same support structure as the louver screening, uh, but we're attaching our Hush Monkey 50 mil modular sandwich panel to the face of it, um, which not only blocks that sound, um, so it blocks 32 decibels of the sound that hits it, it's also got a noise reduction coefficient of 85.85, which is 85%, which will absorb 85% of the sound that's hitting it as well. That comes in standard as a surf mist colour, but we can do pretty much any colour you want. And once again, um, we can integrate it to the platform, as you can see on the photo on the left, or we can give it a standalone screen mounted to plinths or a concrete roof or anything, to be honest, um, like you see on the picture on the bottom right. So handrail barriers, as you can see there, you've got a, down the, along the back of the photo, you can see the acoustic monkey toe screen, a continuation of that. And where it stops, you've got the handrail barrier continuing where the blokes are leaning on it there. Um, so a couple of key points, three rail handrail, or guardrail as it's commonly called. Uh, max spacings of 450 mil between the guardrails or the mid rails, bottom rail and obviously a top rail height of 1.1 metre, 1100 mils. Condenser mounts, um, that's just what, what we refer to there in the photo as a condenser mount, showing a multiple, supporting multiple split units. It's a, predominantly it's a kit set system, um, which is pre-engineered, pre-designed to support whatever the load is required. Um, a couple of key things, it, we can incorporate any supporting mechanisms like the likes of ducting, pipe supports, um, cable trays. Uh, key thing there would be with the mounting solution by Monkey Toe, it's eliminating unnecessary fixings and unnecessary penetrations of a roof. So a few considerations here, I guess, when configuring your platform size. So when talking about the size throughout that design stage, you know, what, what, what do we need to think about? So a couple of points here. Um, we need to consider the service requirements, you know, whether that's the frequency that these units or this equipment needs servicing, um, parts, what parts may need, need replacing, and then obviously cleaning, access for cleaning. Um, do all sides of all units need access, or is it just one or two sides? Um, and then obviously airflow requirements, um, how, you know, what's the distance between the screens that we need to allow for the airflow? Yeah, that's good, Hans. And obviously, on to some design considerations. Um, again, to think about in that design stage. So, how will the roof structure support it? You know, as we've already talked about today, is that through the purlins or is it back to the main structure, the portals? Um, acoustic requirements, so both within the building, so thinking about the actual occupants of the building, but then also the surrounding neighbours, um, particularly when you're, when you're talking some of the noisier, larger ear handling units and so on. Aesthetics needs, so whether there's a screening requirement, um, and then obviously the health and safety of the service personnel. If they're up, up, up there fairly, fairly often, we really need to consider those um, the service personnel and um, their needs to keep safe. So I'm just gonna quickly pull up a poll here. Um, would really appreciate your participation on this. So I'll just pull this up now um, and launch that. 
and we'll keep moving through. That should have come up on your screen now. And um, yeah, appreciate your responses. So the questions are, would you like to be sent a copy of the recording? Obviously keen on getting your feedback there and how relevant is the content of this webinar to you. So we'll give you a few seconds to fill that out. Um, this particular image up on the screen is a recent project we completed in Five Mile Centre in Queenstown. So that's down the bottom of the South Island. Obviously uh, quite a neat tourist location. So when you fly into the Queenstown Airport, you actually overlook some of this development. Um, the platforms that you can see there, obviously surrounded by the monkey toe lover to make it look beautiful from the ground. And you've got a roof access walkway, some of the smaller condenser supports in the middle, um, and also a roof access hatch. So once again, a turnkey solution. Excellent. So Looks like we're, we're yep. That polls, we've got most people there responded. Thanks very much, I'll end that now. Appreciate your feedback there. Awesome. So where can we assist you? I guess looking after that complete design and engineering service, um, all documentation, and then coordinating it, you know, coordinating some of those frustrating needs. Um, we can be a consultancy partner, so to just to advise around compliance, advise around safety, um, some of those some of those points. Um, and whether that's visiting you on site or popping into your office, you know, happy to do so. Yeah, if we moving on to Q and A, so let's kick off with a few questions here. Um, Looks like there's a bunch coming, which is awesome. So we've just got one here in regards to the, does the fixing detail differ from the type of roof sheeting or finish we use? So good question that. Um, I'll just answer that live just for the benefit of everyone on the call. So in regards to roof fixing, um, especially it differ, differs when it comes to your roof um, profile types. Obviously many roof manufacturers throughout Australia and New Zealand different roof profile types, like your common trapeze top fix profile, um, where we would use the fixing detail, which Heinz showed earlier. Um, then you've got some of them are hidden fix, where it'll clamp on, it's a clamp on monkey toe type. Um, and then obviously your corrugated. So certainly we need to understand and take note of the top of particular roof profiles applicable to that structure and building. Um, yeah, so this this um, one here we've got here, what was the weight of the Mount Gambier platform? Dallas, I don't know if you've got any idea around that, otherwise can you help with that one? Otherwise we'll come back to come back to the, um, that gentleman there. Yeah, no, look, I might have to because I wasn't directly involved in it. Um, I know the weight of the, um, the units and the Perlin mounted system and the way that it was distributing the load through the Perlins, that didn't work with the building structure. So spanning the load between the, the rafters and the building portals, that did work with the building structure. But the overall weight of the platform itself, I'm not 100% certain on because I wasn't involved in it, but I can definitely find out. So, Excellent. So we'll, we'll come back to you on that one and, and give you a bit, of, yeah, a bit of an update on that. Thanks for the question. So typically, um, it's about 20% of what structural steel is. So it's just a general rule of thumb. Yep. It's good. An aluminium platform. So another one there, can a monkey toe platform be constructed of timber roof trusses? Uh, the simple answer to that is yes, yep, and it's commonly done. Obviously, 80% of um, old buildings out there have, in New Zealand anyway, have timber trusses, timber purlins. Uh, so we're, we work on a lot of projects like that. Obviously, we are very careful in understanding the makeup of that structure uh, to ensure we don't overload the existing structure. So thanks for that, Peter. Um, we've got one here about the type of aluminium we use. So we use a marine grade aluminium, um, and that's a T6 aluminium, so high tensile. So I guess the beauty of a marine grade aluminium is um, it doesn't need any coating for its durability. So it can be powder coated um, if need be if, for the look, um, but it doesn't require it for its longevity. So thanks for that one. Um, 
question around touch on louver pricing. Uh, you may better give us a bit of an indication on that, Dallas. Otherwise, happy to. I'm happy to address that after the webinar. Yeah, look, I mean, I can give you a ballpark. Um, it's going to be high level because there's a lot of variables in it and there's obviously the difference between NZ and AUD. Um, but, yeah, you're talking roughly two to 300 bucks a square metre and it just depends whether it's freestanding or mounted to a platform, how high it is, um, what the wind loads are on that area, um, what whether it needs backstays, what colour it is. There's loads of variables, but we're happy to give Stephen some idea of pricing directly. Awesome. Thanks, Dallas. Um, and we've got one here about how does your design service integrate with our building engineers. So I guess we typically look after the platform structure and um, supporting structure from the roof up. So whether that's a purlin mounted or whether it's a portal mounted, we'll look after the structure um, or look after the engineering from the roof up. Can you add to that, Toby? No, that, that covers off. That's, that's good. Thanks, Hans. Good. Thanks for the question, Anton. Um, what do we got here? Um, is there documentation available for typical load allowances to your purlins for your platforms for use during schematic design? The, the short answer is yes. Um, obviously, there's, there's um, different variables we need to consider there. But yes, there certainly is, and we can provide them that docu documentation on request. Thanks, Matthew. So there's another interesting question here in regards corrosion of the material and interaction with um, aluminium and steel. And also from uh, in regards to seaside environment, so as Heinz covered off earlier, is a high tensile marine grade aluminium. So it's um, very good in a seaside environment. Um, when we integrate with other materials, obviously we we include an inter, um, integrator division, divisional material, um, typically a neoprene or a polyethylene type material so that there isn't that um, direct interaction between materials that react. Any other questions, Hans? Um, do you have cyclone rating on the louvers? So yes, um, Dallas, you're probably best place to answer this from Queensland. Yes, no, it is definitely something that comes into play in, in Australia, um, probably even more so than in New Zealand. Um, seismic's a huge thing for us in New Zealand, um, but bringing the product to Australia, obviously cyclone rating was one of the first things we got hit with um, to make sure that we were able to meet and exceed the requirements there. Um, so yes, the answer is yes, definitely. Um, we have taken that into account in our physical testing and documentation um, so that we have, we have got something we can share with you there that um, will back that up in terms of cyclone ratings. Uh, we've done recently finished a project on Cairns, in Cairns um, for Harvey Norman. Um, we're working on some ones for some Woolworths ones and the coal stores up there at the moment. Um, so it's, we've done projects in these very high cyclone environments, including Darwin and the north of um, Western Australia as well. That's awesome. That's good. Um, Heinz, there's a question here around keeping the roof areas under the platforms clean from leaf builder to very valid question. Yeah, absolutely. Um, a couple of points on that one. So I guess our, um, our standard purlin mounted platform, we have spacings between the truss network of two point, sorry, 1.2 metres or 2.4 metres depending on the um, loading, load rating of the platform. But that obviously gives you um, a certain amount of access there. Um, there's, a bit of, there's a lot of variability between the um, height of the platform and the roof level. So there is generally space to space to move around under there. And obviously there's, there's that space allowance for the likes of duct work and, and that type of thing that needs to yeah, absolutely. Um, go under the platform. Uh, expected design life. Um, obviously that's an interesting question. De depending on the application for the particular platform we're talking about. So Typically, the aluminium platforms, we provide a lifetime warranty, a minimum of 25 years. Um, the expected design life, obviously, that depends on the loadings and requirements of the building. There was just a question there from Matthew um, that's come up about the corrosion interaction between aluminium and steel. It's a very valid point with the X-beam 
um, because some of the times we'll provide the stubs um, and our stubs are aluminium and they will connect to a structural steel beneath the roof. Um, it is a weatherproof environment underneath the roof, obviously, and we've got flashings around the stubs, but we do provide an isolation. Um, just to confirm Matthew's question there, we do provide some isolation between the aluminium and the steel um, in, in the form of a rubber membrane. Thanks, Dallas. Awesome. Got a question here. Can the mechanical units be fixed directly to the platform deck or do you have supporting rails? So both really, but in short answer, supporting rails. We, we provide supporting rails for the units. Um, typically, if they're the smaller units, they can be fitted to the platform deck, but generally um, we'll provide the supporting rails to ensure they're nicely restrained. Yeah, absolutely. And on that photo you can see up on the screen there, you can see the under lying structure of the mechanical platform. Um, you can see the rails, which are typically at about 600 centres, so that is another way that it can fix back for mechanical units. Uh, there's a question there, are the beams sections available for general sale, alterations and extensions? Uh, yeah, they most certainly are. Obviously, we'll ask some good questions of the customer, um, what their particular application is, because that's very important with um, some of these materials and extrusions. Excellent, and looks like we're coming to an end of the questions. Um, really appreciate you guys firing them in and um, keep them coming. So this one here is about the roofing type. What about membrane roofing? Absolutely, we do have some standard fixing details for membrane roofing, um, as well as obviously our portal mounted platforms. Um, a membrane roof is no problem to fix through to there. Yeah, that's good. Um, There's a question there regarding whether we just do the louvers and acoustic screens and are there other options? Uh, the answer is definitely yes. We have done um, perforated screens in the past. Um, so we're happy to look at anything pretty much to see what we can attach to our support structure. There's no real limit to what we can do. Um, our team thrives on a custom challenge. Um, so we'd welcome whatever you've got in your mind in terms of screening. Awesome. Very good. And at the end of this um, session, we'll make sure we give you our contact details. Anyone that we haven't fully addressed your question, we understand everyone's time is valuable. So should we keep, keep yeah, I'll, moving on? I'll, I'll pop our contact details up there now. Um, there's just a couple more questions here. I, I think there's a good one here about the vibration of the units. That does often come up. Um, generally, the vibration, um, the, sorry, the mechanical equipment has its own vibration isolators. Yep. Um, so that's, that's number one. Um, but we do have also our own um, options of rubber isolation as well to provide additional um, vibration isolation, if you like. Yep, absolutely. Which we'll work with the um, mechanical consultants on ensuring that that vibration is... Um, any concerns of me. Did you have anything on that one, Dallas? No, no, that's good. You've covered it well. Um, and one more question here about the, the um, actual colours. So absolutely, we can customise, again, the colours to suit your requirements. That... Uh, sorry, Heinz, I was just going to touch on that um, question around the X-beam, whether it's suited to existing buildings. Um, Good, good question actually. So the X-Beam, one of the key um, design parameters for the X-Beam was, was to come up with a system that suited existing structures, existing whether it's a warehouse, a manufacturing facility, where um, they were introducing a new um, plant line, for example, a biscuit, new biscuit line, um, and the existing building couldn't take the plant platform or the mechanical generator on the purlins. So it's, it is most certainly a uh, good question there, Mr. Davron, um, around fixing back to existing structure. So it's a lightweight system. It's not introducing a whole lot of unnecessary structural steel, which is going to load up the existing building. That's good. I'm just going to pull up this final poll now, um, just before we finish, and um, would really appreciate your input here today. If you want to want us to fire through um, any further information or you've got any additional um, questions, please um, we can just chuck your details up there now and we'll come back to you.
with any questions. So really appreciate your participation, really appreciate your questions today, and hopefully we've all learned something. Thanks very much, everyone. Thank, thanks a million. Thanks, and God. Apologies, um, someone has typed a question in Spanish, and apologies, my Spanish is very, very much limited to gracias. So thank you, everyone. Gracias, and appreciate your time. Appreciate your feedback and the questions, and let's keep talking, Australia and New Zealand. Awesome. Thanks, all. Cheers. Thank you. See ya.